Happy Saturday, Texas. We are excited to have you here for another episode of The Connect Show, Texas. Myself and my lovely co-host, Amanda, have an amazing show for you today. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Wendy. Hey, how have you been? (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful. Just getting through this heat. Oh, I know. Tell me about it. We are neighbors after all. And um, yesterday I almost called you because I didn't know what to do being back in Texas and everything because I was used to the 59 low and the 72 for the high and now we are back in the thick of the heat so just trying to acclimate ourselves back here but wendy today is going to be an amazing show indeed um good morning texas you know the connect network is always focused on elevation today we are talking about personal branding this is an important topic especially for business owners because personal branding leads to an increase in sales reportedly employees that use social media are 51 percent more likely to reach their sale goals. Also, social media users outsell their peers by 78%. You know, Amanda, that makes a lot of sense because when you develop your personal brand, you give your customers uh, and your potential customers a chance to know you on a more personal and a more friendly level. And 88% of consumers trust family and friend recommendations over any other type of advertising. So, you know, having a strong online presence really helps build that loyalty from consumers and even investors. How about you, Amanda? Would you rather buy a product from a company or an individual or both? You know, I just, I guess it just depends on the um, product, right? I agree. Uh, I think I, if, you know, you, when you meet somebody or um, when you know someone and you're like, okay, I want to buy a house or you're a professional buying a house, right? You're obviously in real estate. I'm in real estate. I want you to know how that works. Do you want to trust that person that you are uh, wanting to buy from, right? So, you know, the Austin area, the San Antonio area, the Texas area, you clearly aren't going to call somebody in another state to buy something, right? So, um, you're going to want to call someone you depend on, somebody that you know is going to be there for you. So, um, that's the type of thing that I would want. Uh, personal, personally. However, if I was going to do plumbing and um, or something like that, I would obviously kind of, I would check out the social media and immediately first. So I would definitely be like, oh my gosh, I remember that song, um, that commercial jingle. I'm going to call them because it's stuck in my head. So there's a lot of different things, I guess. Um, it depends on what it is that I need. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that. It's, it's kind of like a 50-50 depending on what I needed um, kind of thing, right? No, I agree with you 100%, Amanda. I definitely believe it depends on the product or the service, whether you do personal, of course, you know, being business owners ourselves, we always want to support new entrepreneurs. And I mean, that's what we do here at The Connect online. So um, yeah, I I think uh, you could go either way. Um, And, you know, speaking of personal branding, it's an excellent way to promote our business or your business. But I do wonder if it can also cause confusion at times. Like, where does my brand end and my personal life begin? Luckily, our special guest can add to this topic. Later in the show, we will be talking to brand expert Carlene Ramon Figueroa about ways to develop a personal brand or reinvent an old one. And even before that, we have CEO Rayvon Denise, who's always on brand with her luxury real estate agency, CR Elite Realty. Yes, Amanda, but first let's get into some steamy hot topics. Talking about brand reinvention, have you noticed any different with Twitter? Um, Because Elon Musk, who took over Twitter about a year ago, has recently changed the name from Twitter, you know, with the cute little bird logo to X, and it's a large X logo. Um, (laughs) If you've been keeping up with that, Amanda, or have seen, you know, any reports or read on it, what are you thinking about this? You know, it's so funny. I feel like whether you are on social media or not, or on the internet or whatever it is, it always gets thrown somewhere in the mix and it kind of, you know, you kind of look at it and you're kind of like, okay. And, you know, I'll ask my husband questions about it, but I'm not too, too deep in that. However, I did see a story, um, a headliner, I guess you should say, where they were going to be in the ring together. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, there's been all all different kinds of things. And I saw that and I was like, what? I'm- well, you, yeah, well, you know, the tech giant has uh, been making many changes um, since he took over, such as the blue check, you know, the blue verified check, which I'm sure you're very familiar because you are um, 
blue check verified. And it upset uh, many social influencers and celebrities who worked hard to earn that. So most recently, he has also made a very bold statement offering to cover legal fees of people whose employers um, penalize them for something they tweeted out or like in the app formerly known as Twitter. Um, and he has not really specified how he's going to put all this into plan and excuse me, how he's going to put all this into place or what his plan of action is, um, nor, you know, a system for people to contact him about, but man, he's got a lot of, uh, a lot of in the works, right? <laughs> I feel like it's almost hard to keep up with. I mean, how do you keep up with these people? You know, there's, yes. they're always like one so up much. each other on these levels of, I don't even know the capacity of, of one's brain to think of the levels of their, uh, what do you call this conflict <laughs> or, um, let's go in the ring. I mean, um, I saw something about being in the backyard or something, you know, I, I don't know, but <laughs> now I want to talk about another technology that may be affecting more women than men. Artificial intelligence has already replaced 4,000 jobs in May, which comes as no surprise to most. A new report by the McKinsey Global Institute show this can disappropriately affect women as female dominated jobs, such as office support, customer and food service seem to be the easiest to replace, leaving women more at risk for AI takeover. What do you ladies think of this? You know, I... I always try to see the positive side of everything and try to think, okay, instead, let's not see this as an obstacle, but as a solution. Um, if this is going to close the doors, you know, and, you know, obviously it's taking over so many jobs. Um, I always feel like there, you know, people are going to think of a new door to open with this happening. So I can see these women going in and just figuring out, a way to work with AI or, you know, just a way to create new jobs. What about you? What are your thoughts? You know, I, I feel like every, once again, every year there's a, a new technology. I, well, I don't even think it takes a year anymore. I think it's like every 15 minutes, but um, there's, there's always going to be something that's trying to replace something, uh, whether it's robots taking over real estate and, and, you know, there, there's always, I feel like there's always going to need to be a human touch. And maybe that's like an old school way of thinking about it. But for me, I don't know if you're like this too. Um, when we have someone text message us and, and then we have, when, when you read the text message, you don't read their, their tone. Right. So then when you reply, you reply and you're like, Ooh, you read it later. And you're like, did I really say it that way? Um, you know, things like that. So I feel like so many things can get just thrown under under the radar with robot technology or with a fake person giving me um, food, which by the way, there's a Whataburger digital restaurant and I am a Whataburger fan. Like, <laughs> do not give me in and out Like, I don't want to hear about in and out Burger. I am a Whataburger born and raised fan and I want to go there and try that digital restaurant. Have you well, seen hey, that? Amanda, if you're a big Whataburger fan, Whataburger fan, you know, they're hiring. So that would be fun to see you in there and we can get you on the and see how it's a digital kitchen. So I'm curious. It's down the street from both of our homes. So it is. I'm really cool. interested Yeah, to see how all that's going to work. But for now, don't go anywhere because we are going to take a break. But when we come back, ask promise entrepreneur CEO Rayvon Dennis will be dropping in to catch us up on her new businesses and some helpful real estate tip, which is wonderful. So you don't want to miss this. We'll be right back.
back to the Connect Network TV. I hope you've all been enjoying the show so far. We have been discussing personal branding and ways it can benefit your business. Right now, we have Lady Entrepreneur and CEO of CR Realty. Welcome back, Rayvon Denise. Thank you for having me. Hey. <laughs> I brought my team along with me this time, uh, my personal team, my house array. Hey, hey. Love that. we're glad you brought him on. Hello. <laughs> Looking great, guys. So we are so excited to have you guys back. Give us an update. What have you been up to since your last visit at the Connect Show, Texas? Oh, I've been up to a lot. So unfortunately, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and uh, the doctors went in and got it all out. So I am back as a new person, refreshed. I feel better than I felt in the last 10 years. Won't God do it? And I am ready to go. We are actually... Uh, having a relaunch and it's going to be Ray and Jay, which is my business partner takes Houston. Wow. Wow. I love that. That's exciting. And Rayvon, uh, you're in our prayers, uh, continued prayers and look at you coming back and coming back stronger. That is so amazing. Oh, so you. how did you come to the decision to start your own construction company? So with me, I like all things real estate. One of my clients reached out to me um, a few months ago and they said, I don't know if you realize, but you made me $1.9 million in profit last year. And I'm thinking if I'm making my own clients $1.9 million in profit, and that's just one, just imagine how much I can make if I own the construction company as well as the real estate company. So I teamed up with a my business partner, Javier, out of uh, California, and he has a multi-million dollar business down there doing commercial and residential. And I said, hey, how about you bring part of your construction company to Texas so I won't be starting from scratch? We team up and we launch here. Uh, we launched it last month and it is doing amazing. That's incredible. You are so inspiring in all ways. Earlier today, we were discussing personal branding. Your Houston luxury real estate team, House of Ray, seems very on brand with your company, CR Elite Realty. Did your personal brand come into play when considering new business ventures? The CR Elite Realty team is the actual brokerage where we have about 100 agents. And then we have my personal team, which is these two along with another person. And she, uh, Angel, this I <laughs> is very into uh, personal branding and video and allowing people to see who we are. So with her guidance, um, we, we hired two videographers, some photographers, and we've really made a difference since we launched um, the House Array team. Now, what I love to do is keep everything on the same level. I don't want one of my businesses um, to not be branded as good as the other. I want you guys to look at me overall and say that brand is good. So we hired a marketing person um, and she took us to another level. And Rayvon, um, before we move on to the next question, um, I don't know if you wanted to take a minute to introduce um, your team members. I know you said Angel, I believe, was uh, right behind you to the right. But do you want to take a minute and briefly introduce them? Yeah. So we yeah. have Angel Johnson. Angel is in charge of our luxury um, clients. And then we have Justin Thomas. And Justin's in charge of our investors. We also have Michelle, which is an, able to be here today. And she is our Spanish-speaking agent um, that helps anyone that speaks um, Spanish. And of course, we have a bunch of behind-the-scenes people like our marketing and, and videographer and everybody. Nice. So... As a female CEO in the industry, what are some challenges that you face, Raymond? I think the, the biggest challenge I face is, has been more in the construction side of it um, because they don't expect a woman to be um, the owner or CEO of a construction company. Right. So when I walk into rooms, I have to walk in a little bit tougher. And I don't think that we should have to. Right. We should be able to walk in as ourselves. Now, obviously, women knows how, know how to adjust to whatever room we need to be in because we are taking over nowadays. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bother me as much as it would have years ago. But the biggest challenge is just taking that time to take a deep breath and understanding that it's not about me. Me opening up these doors are going to open up the doors for so many other women to know that no matter what it has to do in real estate, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Totally. Wow. You are. I'm, I'm going to run out here and run five <laughs> miles right now because of you. I feel like all kinds of inspired. Um, what would you say to women that are thinking of investing or working in real estate but may need that little push to get started? Give us two or three tips on how we start. I think the biggest part, all of us have seen it across the world that, that, I mean, we knew this from the beginning, but our days are not promised. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So you have to start now, right? Um, 
the biggest tip I can give too is that it doesn't matter the age if you're young or old, right? It's so many people out there that just became multimillionaires and just started at 40 and 50 years old that are doing much more better than people that have been doing it for years. But the biggest tip is consistency. I think a lot of times as women, we are in charge of our families, our kids, our husband, you know, life, and we're the first people that um, the world comes to when they need help. And we lose consistency in the things that we think are important, our goals, right? So when I became, when I was at my most successful time, it was because of how consistent I was. I time blocked. I made sure that I gave my business the time that it needed um, from marketing to lead generation. Um, and I just stayed consistent. Even when it didn't seem like it was successful, I still woke up and devoted three hours to calling and allowing the world to know who my company was. That is probably one of the greatest uh, tips, consistency. If you apply consistency, Rayvon and Amanda, I think to every part of our lives, I think we're gonna have great success because that is definitely one of the most important uh, tips that any that we could pass on to anyone, Rayvon. And so thank you for bringing that up. We love having you here. Thank you for being with us today and bringing your incredible team on. Uh, we love your energy. We love your drive. And it's always a pleasure. So we would love for you to share with our viewers uh, the best way to connect with you, work with you, hire you. So if you can drop all your social media handles and website for us. Okay, so the, the easiest way to get in touch with me is Instagram um, at Rayvon Denise. So R-A-E-B-O-N-N-E-D-E-N-I-S-E. -E -E. um, the next best place is CR Elite Realty. So www.crelitrealty. And you can reach out to me, either me or my business partner, Janelle Compton. Um, and if you would like to hire us for construction, I mean, we have everything down to cabinet builders, whatever it is that you need from luxury to reasonable price. Um, you can also just contact me through Rayvon Denise on Instagram and I'll make sure we get pointed in the right direction. Thank you so much, Rayvon. And okay, beautiful Texans, when we come back, we will be sitting with brand expert and author Tarlin Ramon Figueroa to tell us how a personal brand can make you irreplaceable in your area. Good job, guys. Welcome back to The Connect Show, Texas. If you're just tuning in so far, we have been discussing personal branding and how it can benefit you. Joining us right now is former diplomat turned CEO, brand expert, author Tarlin Rahman Figueroa. Hey, Tarlin, welcome to our show. Hey, what's up, Texas? <laughs> I love that. So, Lynn, the fact that you once worked as a diplomat for the UK is it's fascinating. How was the transition from that to now being a brand expert here in the US? Absolutely. So clearly, judging by my accent, I'm not from here. So I'm from London in the UK. And um, I was a diplomatic consultant and actually had my own business where I, I helped individuals become diplomats for their own country, cause, mission. So helping activists and helping individuals who wanted to move into government. You know, a lot of the times it's kind of like there's a big barrier between you and them. My job was to break through that ice and really get to the core of why they why they wanted to represent their country and what value are they actually bringing to normal people like ordinary citizens so personal branding um was wasn't wasn't the thing that i did i think is one of my core special skills it's just i'm just i can do it with my eyes closed without even trying um so that was back then in in london and i moved to america in 2019 just before the pandemic hit uh, my husband's actually local in in um, massachusetts which is where i'm calling from and so we swapped hometowns i noticed that well i'm not in dc 
I'm not going to be working with government officials. So what do I do here? And what do I do with all of my knowledge, skills and global expertise? And I noticed, wow, there are so many solopreneurs, individuals who don't want to work for corporate America, um, individuals who are really fired up and very uh, passionate about their, their product and services, but they were really bad at presenting themselves. And I just thought, that's what I'll do. The brand consultant of Boss Diplomat. Wow, that's incredible. So how has your background as a diplomat helped when it comes to public relations and branding? Well, think about it. You're talking to someone who has a lot of prestige, title, status, money, whatever. It's so easy to talk to people when you're talking at someone at that level. What I do is I connect with people on an individual level. So I always find out what the core of why they started anything. Um, why are you a diplomat? Why are you an entrepreneur? What got you started in that journey? Let's go all the way back. Let's rewind because a lot of people forget when they're really successful in their career, why they started what they did. When that happens, you get blinded by money, blinded by fame, blinded by whatever society is throwing at you. So when you kind of remind them of why did you, why are you doing what you're doing right now? It triggers a lot of emotions for them. It triggers a lot of suppressed memories that they haven't thought about in a really long time. And for me, as a brand consultant, that's the aha moment. Ah, that's making you emotional. I'm going to use that to your advantage and help you connect to your target audience. If that aha moment is not there, I, I look for that. And I turn that into their brand story. And I help them figure out who is your target audience. And your target audience isn't everyone. My analogy is, um, this is what everyone's target audience looks like. It's a wonky funnel, but this is your target audience and that's your shoot. When you're trying to help everyone at the same time, you have a really small funnel. But then when you have a personal brand that is very focused, your tunnel turns into this. So you're only helping a, a small amount of people that fits your target audience. But your funnel is a lot wider. So you're only grabbing very high quality clients who fits your niche, who you really want to help um, and who actually value what you're bringing to the table. So, Tarlene, I you had me uh, you take them back to what yeah. started, you know, where where they started, because I love that. You know, it's like you go back and you're like sparking that that light, that fire again in them and reminding them of their whole purpose and their passion for starting their their business or, you know, whatever it is that they're doing. So I love that you had me there from the get go. So tell in, so could you please share with us a list or tell us about all the services that you provide at Boss Diplomat Branding? Okay, I'll go with the one, two, three punch. So number one, we need to make sure that you have a brand, a story, a narrative and your target audience. That's called the brand blueprint. Uh, and that is my bread and butter service for all of my solopreneurs. Number two, we move on to image consulting. So you have a brand, you know your target audience. What do you look like when you're presenting yourself? A lot of entrepreneurs don't think about how they are putting themselves together. And consistency is key, not only in your messaging, but also how you show up. And number three is... What does your marketing look like? So your website, does it reflect your brand now? Does your social media reflect your brand now? So I do um, website redesign strategies. I do not build your website. A million people can do that, but how does it actually look? Um, so I'm very visually like attentive to your brand. Earlier today, we were discussing personal branding and its benefits. Can you tell us what makes a strong personal brand? Yeah, consistency is absolutely key. Knowing exactly who your audience is very specifically is rule number two. And rule number three, don't worry about your your competitors. Your competitors will be staying in their lane. And if they try to cross over and copy you, guess what? They will look like the copycats because you're showing up consistently everywhere um, in the same way, in the same format. Um, one thing about AI, um, this is why personal branding is so important because the AI will not get your vibes and your personality the way you can because you are the OG, you are the original. So don't forget that. Solopreneurs have a lot of competition. There are so many other people just like them with the same drive, the same passion and the same need to not work for corporate America. Um, so how do you beat your competitors? And the only way you're going to do that is with you. Uh, you are your own brand ambassador. Don't rely on anyone else to do that job for you. And um, when you know what your brand is and you stick with it 100%, you'll start gathering a following uh, for your business or your services. And the other thing is your value goes up too. So I have a lot of customers um, who were really undervaluing themselves and they felt like they had an imposter syndrome. 
the minute you know your brand, that imposter syndrome is gone, gone. And the level of confidence rises so high, they don't hesitate to charge $5,000 for their products instead of $500 for one product that will take them months to work on. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, please, please leave your social media handles and websites um, so that our viewers can reach out to you and hopefully work with you. Let's go ahead and have you drop your social handles and website. Sure. So our website is www.bossdiplomat.com. Uh, social media on Instagram is bossdiplomat underscore branding. And I'm actually going to be launching a podcast and YouTube channel called Be Your Brand. So I'll be dropping a lot of a lot more hot knowledge um, on those channels. So watch this space. Oh, yeah, we definitely will. And we hope to have you back with your new Be Your Brand. And don't go anywhere because we will be right back with our question of the day. So stay tuned. I help women make money and increase their net worth. You can find me at mommymillionaire.co and you can watch me on the Connect Network TV. Make sure to tune in. Welcome back to The Connect Show Texas, and thank you all for tuning in with us today. We have been talking about personal brands um, because we are about our business. Right, Amanda? That's right. <laughs> it was fun speaking with brand experts and CEOs who lent their opinions on this topic. But earlier today, Amanda posed a great question. Is it safer to keep your personal brand and your business brand separate? I mean, what if you just want to share photos of yourself spending the day at the beach in your thong bikini, right? Or rather, you're just at the park with your children and you want to share those moments. So we suddenly have to worry about if every post is on brand or is it okay to share your real life when your personal brand is connected to your company? Oh, gosh, that is a good question for the viewers at home. Let's take a poll. Head to our Instagram page at the Connect Network and click on our stories to share your response. We may read it on our next episode. Until then, Texas, it has been a pleasure. And thank you to our guests, Rayvon Denise and Tarlene Ramon Figora for joining us. And also, please remember you can head to the Connect Network online to binge watch all our past episodes Netflix style and if you're ready to put your personal brand on our show and promote your business sign up with us at the connect online thank you everyone bye bye for now you're watching the connect network tv on the cw